Hi everyone, this is Dr. Srinivas Kishore. I'm a pediatric surgeon. As you all know, pediatric surgeons are the ones who operate on children. Now, today's topic of discussion is constipation in children. It's a very important topic and very common, very common problem in children. So for this, we need to understand what is constipation. So constipation is any significant delay in passing stools which causes distress in a child. So put it simply, if you take the frequency, frequency if the child passes stools less than three times a week or he has a problem while passing stools like he feels a lot of pain or he's passing hard stools or he's complaining of abdominal pain, all these things, they constitute something called constipation. And sometimes they can present with abnormal uh, postures like crossing the legs, uh, clenching the buttocks, holding it tight. These are called withholding postures. They are withholding the stool. All these, they constitute constipation. So if you look at the causes for constipation, we divide them into broadly two categories. One is called functional constipation. The other one is called organic constipation. Now, functional constipation constitutes the bulk. It is like 90 to 95% of children who have constipation have functional constipation. Very few of them have something called organic constipation. Now, functional constipation is something which is related to habit of passing stools. So it is basically uh, related to the habit, daily routine. We cannot call it as a as disease per se. The organic causes are the actual diseases which can cause constipation. For example, we have a child with thyroid problem, basically hypothyroidism. So these children will have constipation. And there is a disease called Hirschsprung's disease, where the child is born without a uh, without a few nerve cells in the intestine. Now, this can cause constipation. Then we have some conditions where the spine is damaged for some reason. So the nerves which supply the intestine are damaged. They also suffer from constipation. So all these are diseases. All these diseases are put together in the broad category of organic constipation. So these are broadly two categories of constipation, functional and organic. Most common symptoms, as I said, there will be decreased frequency of passing stools. So they will be passing less than three times a week, like once in four days, once in five days. And every time they pass stool, they, they complain of pain. Sometimes they complain there's blood in the stools, or they say that uh, they're passing hard stools. So all these are the main symptoms. And uh, if you if you see the child, you can see the child is in some kind of uh, trouble, that means distress. He is not uh, behaving normally when he is trying to pass stools. Either he is straining too much or he is trying to withhold by crossing the legs or, or clenching the buttocks. So some kind of abnormal posture is there. So these are the common symptoms. When any child is brought to you with these, uh, with signs and symptoms which are suggestive of constipation, first thing is, most important thing is history taking. History taking, that means you should take the history right from the time the child is born. How did the child pass tools when the child was born? Then what was the whether breastfeed was given or bottle feed was given? How, how, is, how was the daily routine when the child was very small? Then how did it change? When did it change? What happens when he tries to pass tools? And along with that, along with that, does he have any vomiting? How is his growth? Does he have any fever? Any uh, abdomen or tummy is distended? All these things you need to ask in the history take. Then coming to examination, again, head to toe examination you have to do and check for any signs of thyroid disease or any other disease. Check the abdomen, whether it's distended or are you able to feel any mass in the abdomen. It's called feculoma because the stool becomes so hard like a stone that when you try to touch the abdomen, you can feel that. Then you have to look at the anal opening. Sometimes what happens is anal opening is at abnormal position because of which also they, they can have constipation. So all these things need to be examined. Now, coming to treatment of constipation, again, same thing. It would depend on what kind of constipation is it. Is it a functional constipation or organic? Organic, as I said, there is a clear-cut disease associated with constipation. So we need to treat the disease, whatever it is. If it is thyroid, we need to give some therapy for that. If it is Hirschsprung, then they will require some surgery and all those things. But organic is very, very few of them have organic disease. Functional constipation constitutes the bulk. So functional constipation, I would say, the majority of the treatment is nothing but counseling. Counseling the parents to 
do the right thing. So most important thing they need to be counseled about is toilet training. So to explain about toilet training, toilet training is something like how we teach our children to brush their teeth. When children are small, we don't give them an option. We tell them you have to brush your teeth, then only you'll get some milk or you'll get some breakfast or you'll get some chocolate, something like that. Same thing with toilet training also. We don't, we should not give option or choice to the child saying that you go to toilet whenever you feel like. No. It should be a discipline. It should be a rule that he has to go to the toilet every day in the morning, spend at least 10 to 15 minutes in the toilet, irrespective of whether he feels like going to toilet or not. So it is like, it is by rule we have to make him sit in the toilet. That will encourage him to form habit of going to the toilet. Second thing is posture. The squatting posture in Indian toilet is the best for the children. That has to be encouraged because many children, they pass tools in standing posture, which is not good. In the sense, when child tries to pass stool in standing posture, the stool doesn't empty completely. A partially it is retained and it becomes hard and difficult for the child to pass it again. So many children, they come with this complaint. So I tell them, encourage them to squat. Indian toilet is the best. If they have Western toilet, at least make sure you put a small uh, stool under the, uh, under the feet so that the knees are at the level of chest. So they rise high. So a specific angle is achieved. So daily habit, daily routine, then posture, then coming to diet. Now diet, we all know that high fiber diet is something which prevents constipation, which also prevents and treats also. Problem is giving that high fiber diet in children because children don't eat everything. So I tell them, you start with the fruits, whichever they like. So you get, it can be apple, it can be banana, papaya, grapes, pomegranate, whatever, whatever they like. Suppose there will be children who don't eat any of those. Then I tell them, you give them at least tomato. Tomato, You cut tomato, put some sugar and give it. Not the juice. You have to give the fruit itself. If they don't eat that also, you try dates. Dates are very good. Daily on four or five dates. Also help relieve the constipation. Suppose if they don't take that also, then what I tell them is, best thing is, keep a bowl of salad. It can be cucumber, carrot, tomatoes, all these things. Something like a bowl of salad at the dinner, dinner table. And let the parents also eat. Because children try to imitate what their parents do. So once parents start eating salad, they are curious to know what their parents are eating. That is how they learn to eat. And if they can give green leafy vegetables and vegetables, and some children do eat. If they are eating that, that's very good. So that part of diet has to be encouraged. And uh, there are some things which need to be avoided. Especially maida based foods have to be avoided. So most commonly are bread, cake, biscuits and some breakfast items which contain a lot of maida and this stuff will be avoided and even chips and all fried foods and all these things. And children, the problem is we cannot avoid them totally because children, they will not accept. So at least we try to reduce the frequency like once or twice a week. So again, to prevent constipation, uh, same thing, toilet training is very important. The age group is between two years and five years. That is the time when we need to train them. Actually, if you see most of the play schools, they have a toilet training uh, program also in place because that is the age we have to target. And that is the age we train them so that for the rest of their life, they are trained. Encourage squatting, encourage high fiber diet. High fiber may be vegetables or it may be fruits, it may be dates and all those things. Then uh, most important, another important thing is whenever a child has an episode of constipation and he has pain, and we have to take care of this pain, make sure that you relieve the pain because pain is something, is a, is a very bad experience for the child. If child experiences pain while passing stool, he will not, will not pass stool again. He'll try to withhold because he's scared that he'll have pain when, he's, when he tries to pass stool. So whenever he complains of pain while passing stool, we need to address that. The best way, technically it's called sits bath, it's nothing but a tub of lukewarm water, you put some salt in it and make the child sit in that. Because that heat relieves the pain in the anal region. So that is how you give relief to the pain. The second thing is whenever medications are required to assist in this treatment of constipation, preferably we give something orally. That means some liquid which you can swallow or something like water, uh, which can be mixed in water and given. And try to avoid keeping these uh, suppositories or uh, uh, soap 
in the anal area because that is also again painful and it is a very bad experience to the child. So limit the bad experience and encourage good habits. That is how we prevent constipation. So if a child already has constipation, the dictum is to give a high fiber diet. The problem with children is uh, uh, they do not eat everything. That is the most common problem we face. So what I can do to what I can do is I can give options to the parents, saying that these all can be taken. So you see what he likes, and accordingly you adjust things and give it to him. As I said, vegetables. If the child takes vegetables or you mix vegetables in some food, suppose suppose. Sometimes you give rice and you add some uh, carrot to that, or you add some beetroot to that, and child is still eating. It's very good. If he's not taking it that way, the other option is uh, uh, to give fruits, fruits which are he likes, or dates. And uh, sometimes we have something like uh, ragi is there. Ragi Java is very commonly uh, used in South India, and that can be used. So all these things, these are these all things parents have to try. I can give them only the options of. Uh, foods which contain uh, high fiber, and parents have to try and see which uh, the child likes and give it. At the same time, avoid all this uh, bread, cake, biscuits, chips, and uh, fried foods and all these things. Avoid is very difficult in children, so at least make it you know, like once a week or something like that. And when I try to tell them, avoid non-vegetarian foods. Uh, non-vegetarian also causes constipation. So I, uh, till the constipation is relieved and uh, the routine is established, so I tell them avoid uh, non-vegetarian foods also. Mm-hmm.